Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, What I New Earth. If you are new here, my name is Debbie Dubois and I am an awakening creator being just like you. I'm on this ride right there with you and uh, I have this need to just share my path um, in hopes that if I can help one person just have a new perspective or learn something about themselves or this journey, it, it makes it all worth it to me. So. In this particular video, what I want to talk about is my work with my inner being. Um, I think everybody experiences their inner being differently at different stages. Um, I think that in my last video, I talked a little bit about how we had a significant um, influx of our energy come in from our inner being in the beginning of March around somewhere around the 8th or the 9th that kind of finished up around mid month. And with that infusion, um, I personally feel that I've had a change, a little bit of a change in the way I'm working with my inner being. So I, I just wanted to share what the experience looks like. And I guess I can begin by talking about um, for many years, uh, you know, I've been I have been pretty conscious of this world being upside down since the beginning. And I've always had, I guess you could say, the focus, if you will, on my spiritual development. I think there was only a period of time, like in my twenties, where I just, you know, let's just drink yourself silly or get high or whatever I could do to get away from this world you know, withdraw my energies because I've always been working. I've always been here working on myself. And there was that short period of time where I just blew it out. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do any more of this work. Get me out of here. Um, but uh, the work that I've done in the past was really actually a little bit more from the new age perspective as the new age information. And I do consider that to be kind of like a, an attack on us and our spirituality and that it was really a lot of things were pulling us off um, course and giving us the wrong um, instructions. But say what you will about it, that's how a lot of us found each other. That's where a lot of us first began our experiences and, you know, connecting with each other, especially with the uh, advent or invention of the um, Internet, we all of a sudden started coming together. And I've been there since the beginning. Like as soon as the Internet, I did one of the first websites. I just want to I just want to say that I worked in web design and I was doing websites, coding and all that stuff before, you know, most people even knew what a website was. So not that I'm a programmer. I'm not that good. <laughs> But what I'm saying is, is that I've been online since the beginning and it was very apparent that those of us with spiritual um, awakening um, tendencies or people that were conscious of what, hmm, that this world, world wasn't exactly the way we want it to be or think of it as, all those people started getting drawn together in the, in the community and um, we all had to kind of feel our way along. A lot of people that I know, um, including me, I mean, I followed people that channeled. Some of my favorite uh, information comes from channels. Bashar is a great channel. Um, and uh, Cryon, excellent. A lot of other people that I met were channeling themselves, you know, channeling through themselves and channeling other beings. So channeling became extremely popular as everyone knows and to some degree i kind of felt like because i never had any one channel through me that somehow i was lacking and i mean going back to 2012 when i first started on youtube i think it was the beginning i found my first video 2012 oh my gosh that was kind of funny but i mean i hadn't changed I, i'm still that same person i still have the same like goals i just remember looking back on it how naive i really was in that i didn't have this inner being infusion that i do now that does understand so much more and the experience that goes along with you know following patterns and paths and then finding out where they take you and then going oh that was a dead end but anyways 
I feel that like I did a lot of article writing and things of that nature and I do feel like I was channeling. But the thing is, is I never felt I was channeling anybody but me. And in the spiritual community, I mean, I remember even being accused of being in ego because I was actually communicating this stuff from myself, not by someone who channels. I mean, I, but I mean, I have actually been under fire for, you know, how dare you think you know, because you don't have this experience. And I'm here to tell you that now that I'm having a much bigger infusion of the inner being, the truth is, is I knew all along what I knew. But I let that experience unfold to question what I know. And I do think that that's part of this whole process. So, I mean, I'm sharing this because I want, I want to sort of set the stage for, um, you know, what the inner being felt like before and what it feels like now, because I think there's been a significant change. And I actually think I can talk about the first infusion came at the beginning of March. I had this session. I can only say it was like having a session. It felt like I had a session with an ascended master, only that ascended master was my inner being, Aniana. And, um, and since then I've had another infusion. I think that this is what's happening. I think that we are, um, we are, we are getting infusions. We will continue to get them very regularly. Um, those of you who are super conscious of your energy and and notice a change, I would love to hear from you in the comments. I mean, I was just talking about this last night. I'm conscious of every single thing I think and say and do. It's it's as if I'm watching myself, but I am that person that's watching myself. And, um, and I can almost always get like explanations for things because, because the part of me that is trying to grow and transform and integrate the other aspects, that part of me is always listening. Okay, please explain this to me. Okay, please explain that to me. In other words, I feel like I finally have that being along with me that can help me understand the things that my mind cannot understand. So all of that to begin just talking, and I won't talk super long about it, but I want to share the inner being experience I had, I guess it was probably a week ago now. And uh, I remember going to bed rather late that I no, actually I went to bed rather early that night because a lot of times I'm up until two, two to three o'clock in the morning. But I am on Pacific time for some reason. <laughs> so I'm, I live on the Eastern coast. So anyways, of the United States, I guess you probably can tell by my accent. But anyways, um, so I went to bed probably about midnight and around two o'clock in the morning, I just woke up wide awake and I'm like, oh shit, I'm wide awake. Why am I wide awake? And I just laid there for a while and I started to have like a lot of information coming in. I felt like like this pull, this tug, this um, like this isn't by accident. We woke you up on purpose kind of thing. And having become aware of the inner being as I have the thing I always do is I just put my hand on my heart. And I did that because I said, I just have a feeling that you need to tell me something. So I'm here, I'm awake. I don't know why it has to be at two in the morning, but I trust you. And you know, what do you got? What do you got to show me? And I already covered like some of the things that were said to me, um, said to me or shown. It, it's interesting because my experience with my inner being is a lot of times actual communication, like conversation, like I'm hearing myself ask myself questions and I think about it and I'm like, that's a really good question. Let me think about that. And then I go into my knowing, right? My heart, my inner being and the inner being through me answers the question. So it's very much like having a full blown dialogue. So I was shown a lot about polarization um, and the 
polarization period of time. And if you haven't seen that video, um, I've never done this before, but I'm going to say, um, and I'm not sure which side it'll show up on, but I'm going to put a card in here that will link that video that talks about the generalizations. What I wanted to talk about was spe a specific example of clearing a trigger, because I thought that this might be helpful for those of you who struggle with clearing triggers. I mean, God only knows the last three years have been nothing but a series of triggers for me. And I've had certain people in my life that literally trigger me on purpose just to see where I'm at. And they're like, yep, you're still sensitive to that. Um, the great news is, is that I've had several cases where I've been tested on my triggers within the last week and it just flows over me. And I'm like, that didn't bother me. It didn't even touch me. In one case, one case, an emoji was put up that was a button. And the very next day or a couple days later, I was looking back at something and I ran across it and I said, that was a button. That person put a button. They knew they were trying to trigger me. I didn't even recognize the emoji of the button. That's how untriggered I was, which was such a freeing feeling. People deal with the triggers because once you deal with your triggers, you're going to be like, oh, oh, <laughs> you suddenly feel the sense of self-love and sense of self-peace. But so I'm going to go through an example of what I was shown. Um, I'm trying to think of how, how it was shown to me that, okay, we were talking about triggers and she was showing me the things that trigger me are the things that I need to focus on. And she said, one of those things, you know, think of something that, that is a, a big trigger for you and you've just made a recent discovery about it. And I said, you're probably talking about complainers. And first, let me explain what my beef is with complainers, because that feeds into or what my beef has been about with complainers, because that really feeds into so much of what cleared for me in this. OK, so I think of people that complain and I'm not talking about someone that complains they have a headache. I, I'm hurting. I have a headache. I'm talking about when someone has a situation that they're in, that they've been in for a long time and they continue to complain about it, all right? Not everybody complains about those kinds of situations, but the ones that bother me the most or have bothered me the most are the ones that continue to talk about it, continue to complain about it, um, and, and, and you know, you give them your time and attention and you try to help them explain that there's a course of action that they can take so that they don't have to have this situation anymore. And I am a very giving person of myself. So I'm very used to being that person that someone will talk to about problems. But what bothers me a lot of times is when someone complains about something and you can see they're not doing anything about it. They're not doing anything about it at all. Um, some people will be like, try things. And even if it doesn't work, those things don't bother me. What bothers me is when someone doesn't try to fix the situation. So I realize, okay, there you go. Higher self, inner being, there's an example. I get triggered when people complain. All right. So then I was asked, okay, what is it within you? that relates to this and i thought well i made an i made a complete realization when i was visiting kimberly uh, a month ago is that i'm a total complainer and then i've never liked that about myself i mean this was i had already made that recognition before this lesson so the inner being knew that i was at that space where i could accept yeah you are a complainer and i remember saying to kimberly you know what because i was sick and I was complaining and I didn't like the how I was feeling. And I always feel super guilty when I do things that I don't, you know, it's it. I guess I knew then that that bothers me and here I was doing it. And so instead of allowing that to make me feel bad about myself, because you're when you are triggered by something like that in yourself, you tend to project it. So I'm thinking to myself, oh, Kimberly thinks I'm such a complainer, right? 
And my reaction was, okay, and I'm not saying she was, but what I'm saying is, is I was complaining. My, my solution to the thing was to grab it and own it. So I said, you know what? I'm a complainer and I own it and I'm going to be proud of it. And if I want to complain, I'm going to complain. And that's just all there is to it. <laughs> so interestingly enough, after I made that declaration, I stopped complaining. It was like once I said I was a complainer, there was nothing to project. I was like, OK, so you think that that would solve the problem, right? OK, I've integrated that piece into myself. Well, I'm sure that was part of the process and the reason why the inner being could talk to me about it. Um, so she she started to guide me. OK, so she asks me, why do you complain? Have you really looked at why you complain? And I thought, no, I really haven't. But the answer was really right there. I said, well, I complain when I feel uncomfortable. If I'm uncomfortable physically, this seems to be something that I complain about. It's physical discomfort that I, that I really complain about. And I go back to this, oh, I, <laughs> I had a situation where um, when I was married to my husband and we were taking a trip up to um, Washington DC I drove the whole way we got there we had two kids um, and he wanted he did not drive and I tend to drive the whole way because he tends to fall asleep at the wheel or want to and I can't stand that I don't like that feeling so I drove the whole way we got there and he immediately after a 10-hour drive wanted to start going to see the sights and he was really like adamant. This is what I'm doing. This is what we're doing. I want to see the sights. So I'll never forget that period of time of being exhausted and having a stroller and having to keep walking, keep walking. And, and I complained and I complained for years about that situation. So that's what sprang to my mind when I was asked, what do you complain about? And I thought, yeah, I complain that I complain like if I'm hungry and I haven't been able to eat, and the family gets distracted, and they're doing something else, and we're not eating, and we're not getting to what we're supposed to be doing, and everybody, and I'm like, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. My kids turn around and say, yeah, we know, Mom. You've said it a 100 times. So this is kind of like what the inner being was showing me. So she said, do you see the correlation between your sense of powerlessness over your situation that nobody's listening to me nobody cares how i feel nobody's helping me solve my problems no one's making this better they don't love me all these decisions that were being made because i was uncomfortable but what was the correlation with the things that bother me about complainers i was shown because I wasn't doing anything about the situation. I was expecting others to take care of me, okay? Get me some food. Um, tell me it's okay to stay in the hotel room so that I'm not tired or go back to the hotel room. I really, it was a very difficult situation because I had, you know, we had our children and I couldn't have gone and gone to sleep anyways because one of the children, which I was, you know, which was more my responsibility was the baby. <laughs> so the baby would be in the room, not sleeping and all that. So, you know, I couldn't, I, in that situation, I'm really not even sure how I could have done it differently, but it was a glaring example of how I was projecting this sense of helplessness, this sense of, I need other people. It's, it's, it's very indicative of codependence when you have to have the outer people acknowledge you, fix the situation. And how many people do you know in your life are like this? How many times are you like this? The inner being was showing me that part of this process of integrating pieces and coming into our whole aspects and becoming less codependent is because we need to become fully responsible for ourselves. So we need to take the steering wheel Stop giving the steering wheel to other people. And so I was asked, do you see how, say, in a situation, like I was going back in time to the last time I spent time with family, you know, 
they had said, hey, we're going to, you know, get something out. And I was excited about that because I've been, I've been doing really healthy eating and, and I indulge sometimes. And so I was excited. I was like, oh, we're going to get wings or we're going to, you know, get something like pizza, you know, because I've been having juices. And, and meanwhile, I was getting more and more and more hungry. And they were off thinking about other things, the dogs, the video games, you know, this story and that story. And I started getting that feeling of complaining. And I, I thought about that. And in that moment, I should have fed myself or I should have made a decision. I'm going to go get this. Do you guys want to come with me? But I didn't. I, I, but I saw it and it was a, a living example of how we can expect others outside of ourselves to solve our problems. And that it would be really easy to be a better adult to our own child. That's kind of what it really boils down to is that your inner child's hungry and you're not feeding her. And um, and you're expecting another person's parent to feed your child. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I could come and the child takes the steering wheel and says, Mommy, Mommy, I want pizza, I want wings. So don't go eat a peanut butter sandwich because that will help you right now. I want wings, I want, you know. And so the adult in the room, the inner being, the inner being aspect needs to step up and say, Oh, wow, I need to eat something. I'm going to go eat an apple. You know what I mean? Um, so, again, this is all turning us towards solving our own problems. The flip side of that is, is what I'm shown is, is that we need boundaries so that other people don't expect us to solve their problems. And that's a big one. See, this is what contributes to what I call the polar, polarized relationships where you've got someone in charge and telling the other person what to do and the other person just follows orders, right? When we don't have boundaries and we don't know how to say no, we tend to draw to us those who will push those boundaries and try to get their needs met through us. And that is another aspect of this that needs healing. So it's either we're expecting others, and I and I do believe it's funny because the polarization of service to others and service to self, what's really funny is, is what I've started to be shown and start to observe is that is not a fixed dynamic. You can have a service to self, service to others, relationship okay in one instance and that service to others person goes over here and has another relationship and they become the service to self it's not cut and dry depending upon the contracts with the different people sometimes you're the one that serves and people pleases and then in other cases you're the one that shows up as the person who um, needs other people to solve your problems. Um, in other words, serve, serve me. You know, it's like, it, I hope that that makes sense. This period of time is bringing that out of polarization and bringing it to center. It is extremely important for us to understand that for every minute, we are serving someone else instead of our own self, we are way out of balance. If we are totally serving ourselves and I wanna say placing your power outside of yourself, like I need you to do this for me to be okay and that's service to self. I need you to do this, I need you to be this. I need you, that's service to self. So this gets kind of tricky. We have both inside of us. Some people are more one or the other in different relationships. But my point is bringing this all back to balance to first make sure that you know that you can meet your own needs, that you can stand in your own power, that you don't need anyone to do anything for you. And that, that is one of the things, moving to you know, my new apartment, I said everyone should do this. Everyone should go through this experience if they haven't gone through it, is start with a blank slate, move into a space, a blank space, and create your reality the way you want it, especially if you've been living with other people. <laughs> because I couldn't figure out what colors I liked. I didn't know what furniture style I liked. 
I didn't know what kind of paintings I'd like on the wall. I didn't know, and I know those are surface things. I didn't know myself from that perspective at all. Um, I had figured certain things out, like I really only want what I need in the cupboards. I don't want any extra stuff because I want a place for everything and everything in its place. Um, there were so many things that once I moved into my own space, I didn't have anyone else in my energy field. I didn't have to deal with anyone else's moods. I didn't have to worry about what my moods were and how they were affecting others because I'm like that. Some people don't care. I am very sensitive to other people's needs. There's the people pleaser. See, we're good combination of these things. But what's happening is, is the inner being is working with us as a collective. This is what's needed to bring us up to a, a certain level um, so that we can make this leap in consciousness. Where we are headed, the realm we're headed to, you are a completely individuated creator being. There's no one that's gonna be your mommy. There's no one that's gonna be your daddy. There's nobody that's going to take care of you when you're sick or be there for when you get old because you don't get old. But what I'm trying to say is, is that we have been so indoctrinated into a codependent society. This whole part about bringing back our own aspects and this part about the polarization pushing us away from others into our own corners is really for the purpose of teaching us how to care for ourselves, how to put our needs first. Once we have our needs met, we have an abundance of energy to help others. Since I've been like putting my needs first, I'm able to say, hey, yes, I can help you with that. Let me finish what I'm doing right now because it might, you know, it's usually kind of important to me. But then when I'm done and I've drawn those boundaries, I'm able to say, Hey, yeah, now what can I help you with? Um, so as we go through this process, our inner being is going to work with us differently. Going back to this experience with my inner being, you know, my inner being was reminding me that if I could get my own needs met, which I've been working on, and it was acknowledged, it's not like this session with my inner being was this is what you need to do it was kind of like do you see why you've gone through what you've gone through it's like that past life review right do you understand why you claimed that complaining piece and then number one i really did start feeling that i didn't need to complain anymore because i started to realize that I am fulfilling my own needs and I've been working on the aspect of myself, but it was the conscious piece that was the final piece that needed to come in for me to see it and then say, wow, that's integrated in and it's resolved. Okay. Prior to that time where I know that I have this assistance in helping me to see the aspects and to see them as fully as I can. Prior to that time, I was only conscious to an extent, but I didn't know how to resolve the, itch, it, the issue. With our inner beings here, I'm, I'm suggesting, and I don't know for sure for anybody else, but I'm suggesting that it might be a lot easier to integrate these aspects in and see them clearly, see the total purpose they played, almost like the past life review, and then they don't trigger you button trigger remember i talked about that um so anyways i think i will leave that video there um working with your inner being is i think everybody has a particular way listen your inner being is at the helm right now whether or not you are conscious of it whether you're working with your inner being i do think that the more you focus your attention and your mental faculties on making this a priority, the more and more you're gonna see the presence. Um, if you're busy and distracted doing other things, it's nothing wrong with that. Your inner being is working with you in different ways. You may have circumstances happen that stop you from doing what you wanna do. Um, what I've been shown and what has been confirmed through various people that I've connected with the information and I've mentioned them in other videos, 
um, and that is that we're on our timeline. We're we're on the timeline. Um, there is only one timeline in this universe now. Um, all the overlays and the usurping of the the programming and all of that has kind of been dealt with. We are um, on the singular timeline, and. Um, Athena does mention in her video that time has been stopped, you know, it's stopped from, you want to call it the universal aspect, time stopping um, for a two year period for the benefit of people being able to work out their own personal timelines. And I say this because this is what the inner being is doing. The inner being is at the helm. And if you want to question that, just every time you think of something that you really planned on doing that you really wanted to do and somehow it just didn't work out, your inner being is saying, nope, that's not on your timeline. Nope, that relationship is not on your timeline. Nope, that breakup, that breakup has to happen. I'm sorry, these are the things that are going to happen on your timeline that you actually signed up for when you entered the universe. We received scripts. We knew what roles we were going to play, and it's updated. Since everything's happening at once, it's updated continually. We continue to make new contracts, and we continue to fulfill contracts, and, and this process is going on all the time. We are now being forced onto that timeline because nothing is going to deviate on the outcome. So we can't go create our story. You know, I may say, I want to go live in Hawaii, and I'm just going to leave everything, and I'm going to sell... And if my inner being knows that's not where I'm supposed to be, it will not happen. So the inner being is at the helm. He or she is showing up in a different way for you in any way that your, your aspect that's here and now needs. So I hope that that comforts you. It doesn't matter if your inner being is showing up like my inner being. I'm sharing it. Because I do believe that if you want to have that kind of connection with your inner being, you can. But you really have to focus on it. You really have to hone in on it. It's just like working out. You know, you have to focus on your muscles. You have to do that work. Um, but even if you're not and you've watched this video, I'm sure your consciousness is ready or has been ready, or you're confirming experiences you're already having where your inner being is actually coming in to work with you. I think the more of us that become conscious of our inner being, the more we listen to our inner being, the easier the road goes. That is how I'm feeling about my experience. The more I'm tuned in to the lessons that are there in front of me, the more at peace I become, the more I'm like, oh, I understand. Or if I don't understand, I say, what's this about? Right, I get it, I understand. When you can make sense of what's happening around you and you kind of know somewhat the destination you're headed and then you, you study things like OBE, out-of-body experiences, like Darius Wright is, is I'm following some of his, his videos right now and he's going over those out-of-body experiences. I'll put his link below. Uh, and Athena's. I mean, I, I will continue to put these links because they're very valuable confirmation resources. But as I see hard proof of someone that's actually getting to the other side in their whole consciousness, you become less afraid of dying. You start to realize we don't die. You start to really know it. All of this is empowerment empowerment of your inner being this is where we're heading this is where the breaking of the codependency comes in we have to understand who we are each of us is a creator being of our own right and really until we have that full empowerment of knowing who we are and knowing where we're headed can we relax into it and allow the universe to deliver up all the miracles and to live the kind of lives that we know we were meant to be. So I know I said I was going to wrap this up a little while ago, but there's the wrap up. So that's it for now. I cannot wait. I've got more videos coming. I'm ready to shoot more videos. 
And uh, I really hope you'll, you'll join me and that this resonates with you. If you like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to my channel if this resonates with you so that you can see new videos as they come out. Hoping to come out quickly. Um, and share them with a friend if you think you know someone that um, resonates. I said this before and I'll say it again. I'm not really concerned so much about building a channel. I don't care how many followers I have. What I'm looking to do is provide information to the people that are really seeking this information. I don't care how many people. I don't care if it's 15. If someone needed to hear this, it's so worth me sharing because that's what I love to do. All right. So until next time, I'm going to say goodbye and I'm going to say namaste. Bye.